The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Has this ever happened in your home? You're sitting listening to the radio when... Hello? This is the Radio Checking Bureau. Is your radio turned on now? Why, yes, it is. What program are you listening to, please? This is your FBI. Do you know who sponsors that program? Of course I do. It's the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Just last week, I got my equitable representative to bring me that fact-facing chart for fathers they tell about on this program. And believe me, that chart's a real eye-opener. So naturally, I know that This Is Your FBI is sponsored by the Equitable Society. And in just 15 minutes, I'll give all fathers full information about the Equitable Society's fact-facing chart that this father found so valuable. Tonight's FBI file, The Sunshine Swindlers. A criminal who commits a minor crime and who remains near the scene of his crime ordinarily is hunted only by a local police department. But the criminal who goes after bigger game, who regards the entire nation as his bailiwick, who commits a crime and then moves on sometimes thousands of miles presents a more difficult problem. The problem of finding one person in a nation of 140 million people. Every clue becomes an important one, for every clue might be the one which helps your FBI to bring the criminal to justice. But whatever the difficulties, however many times your FBI may have been frustrated, the search goes on, because to stop would be to admit defeat and to leave the way open for the criminal to choose another victim, a victim who might be you. Tonight's file opens in a house located on the shores of Miami's Biscayne Bay. In the living room of this residence, a woman is sipping a long, cool drink as a man enters. Hiya, Claire. Hello. What are you drinking? Rum and Coke. It tastes good? Mm-hmm. Looks good on you, too. What? <laughs> Look at the front of your dress. That's the dribble glass. I've been waiting two days to nail somebody with that. You stupid. I got Get you. Get out of here. I nailed you good. Get out, I said. Greetings, I my dear children. I said greetings. Shut up. Claire. Look what that idiot just did to me. What happened? Another one of his practical jokes. Now, Charles, I've asked you. Oh, it was just the dribble glass. Dribble glass. Itching powder. Squirting flowers. That's all I get all day long around here. I'm fed up with it, see? Claire, control yourself. I'm fed up with this whole routine. Darling, please. For two weeks now, I've sat around this joint all day long while you've been out to racetracks, beach clubs, tea dances. Strictly business, my dear. Some business. Claire, if you... Could... I'd like to remind you that on the first of the month, we blow this house and two cars we've rented. Claire, listen to me. I've made a score. Huh? You mean you've met a dame? Yes. She's exactly the type we've been looking for. You telling the truth? Word of honor. Where'd you meet her? At the beach club. Her name is Reynolds. Grace Reynolds. Any dough? Loaded. What's the story on it? From the Middle West, 40-ish, a widow. Hey, that's right up your alley. Precisely. What about Julie? She's practically illuminated. When do you see her again? We have a luncheon date at the beach tomorrow. Uh, let me have a pen and some paper. I want to write her a note. Here's a pen. Here's some paper. Thank you. Now, uh, I shall tell her how long and difficult the hours will be until we meet again. I want her to... What's wrong with this pen? Rubber point. 
<laughs> now do you see what I mean? Excuse me, are you Ralph Mitchell? That's right. Your agent in charge told me to see you. I'm Jim Taylor. Oh, hello there, Jim. Sit down. <laughs> Thanks. That brings you here to Miami. Well, I've been working on a case in Baltimore. I'll, I'll give you a brief outline on it. Okay, fire away. Well, a gang of jewel thieves have been operating up there. Two men and a woman. Uh-huh. The victim was a wealthy Baltimore widow. One of the men became friendly with her, took her out several times. He posed as a broker. What about the other two? Well, they were allegedly his secretary and his chauffeur. I see. Well, one night he took the victim out in his car, drove to a lonely spot, took her jewels, and left her there. Hmm. What are your leads? Well, they'd been living in a hotel in Baltimore. I learned that from the victim. But by the time I got there, naturally, they'd already checked out. I presume you have a description of them? Yes. Yes, we've sent out circulars. Well, you should have one down here by now. When did the robbery occur? Two weeks ago. Any of the jewelry turn up? Not yet. No. I gather you think the gang is down here. That's right. Why? Well, yesterday I finally established the fact that they'd bought plane tickets to Miami. I see. Am I to work with you on this case? Yes. Good, good. Any suggestions on our first move? Well, naturally, we should get the circulars to all the hotels, rooming houses, real estate agents. Right. right. And there's one other lead I'd like to follow up. What's that? Well, when I searched their Baltimore hotel room, I found a catalog they'd left behind from an outfit in Philadelphia called the Palisades Novelty Company. Yeah? They sell a complete line of practical jokes. Well... Now, as you know, practical jokers are incurable. Now, if one of the gang left that catalog, he might just turn up at a novelty store down here to replenish his supply. Yeah. So let's get to work on that angle at once. Ah, uh, Mrs. Reynolds. This is a glorious day. Glorious. Indeed it is. You know, I've just been thinking. Oh? What about? What a fortunate fellow I am. Well, how do you mean? Oh, to have this beach, the warm sunshine, and above all, your charming companionship. Thank you. You know, Mrs. Reynolds... Oh, please. Call me Grace. May I? Of course. Oh, thank you, my dear. I hope in turn that you'll call me... Richard. Very well, Richard. But much better. <laughs> you know, Grace, I have a confession to make. What, Richard? If I'd followed my original plan, right now I'd be winging offward in a plane. Really? Yes. I had every intention of leaving this morning. What changed your plans? Would you really like to know? Yes. Meeting you. Oh, Richard. Are you pleased? Why, well, I... excuse me, oh. Mr. Montgomery. What? Uh, oh, uh, hello, Miss Claire. I hate to disturb you, sir. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh, uh, Mrs. Reynolds, uh, this is my secretary, Miss Claire. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, what do you want, Miss Claire? Your New York office has been trying to reach you. Oh, bother. They said it's important. Tell them I don't wish to be disturbed. Yes, sir. What about Charles? Uh, where is he? Here, here at the club. He's waiting for you. Tell him I won't need the car this afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, how's the market? Steady. Good. Uh, that'll be all, Miss Claire. Yes. Goodness, I'm keeping you from your business, Richard. My dear Grace, the only business I have is to be with you. Ralph. Hello there, Jim. You're just in time. Oh, what do you mean? There's a teletype just came in for you. Huh? There you are. Thanks. Go into my office, Jim. Okay. Any luck today? Yes, I picked up a lead. Don't know what good will do us, though. What'd you find? Well, I went the rounds of the novelty stores. I took these sketches that were drawn up from the descriptions we had of the three jewel thieves. Yes? A man in one of the stores recognized this fellow here. Well, that was the chauffeur. Huh? Mm, that's right. Uh huh. He'd been in the store the day before, and he bought, of all things, some rubber handcuffs and a toy mouse. I see. He asked for a lot of other items, but they weren't in stock. Did he leave his name or where he lived? No. No, but I'm having the store put under surveillance just in case he does return. Well, Jim, that at least establishes the fact that they are here in Miami. That's right. Uh, what's in that teletype? Hmm? Oh, I asked Washington to check with the Palisades Novelty Company. Remember I found their catalog in that Baltimore hotel room? Oh, yes, yes. 
Well, I thought that if the catalog had been sent to someone in the hotel, we'd get a specimen of handwriting. But they had no record of any such request. You know, I don't understand why we haven't heard anything from the hotel and real estate people on that circular. No, I don't either. Ralph, if they're all down here, they're undoubtedly going to pull another job. We've got to catch up with them before they land the next victim. Claire? Oh, Claire. I'm in here. Oh. Hello, my dear. Hello. What's this? What? Uh, this broken vase. I threw it at Charlie. Unfortunately, I missed. Now, Claire. Look, I've taken all I can from that guy. This is the end. What did he do now? When I woke up this morning, my hands were clamped together with rubber handcuffs. When I went to brush my teeth, there was soap in the toothpaste. I drank coffee out of a dribble all cup. All right, all right, darling. We have more important things to discuss. Nothing can be more important. Now, listen to me. We're moving in on Mrs. Reynolds tonight. Hmm? So soon? My dear, I've had four days with her. With my technique, that's more than enough. What's the setup? We're going to work differently this time. I like it down here, and I think we'll stay a while. You mean after you take the jewel? Yes. How can you do that? I'm calling her now. Just listen, and you'll find out. I don't get it. Mrs. Reynolds' servants are off tonight. There'll be no one in the house. Yeah? Quiet. You'll hear the rest. Hello? Hello, my dear. Oh, Richard. How are you? Splendid, thank you. I just called to confirm our engagement for the evening. Oh, yes? I'll pick you up at about eight. That'll be fine. Uh, darling, do you by any chance have to be home early? No, of course not. Why? Well, I've dismissed my chauffeur for the evening. I thought after dinner we might take a ride in the moonlight. Just we two. Oh, uh, I'd love that. Fine. Oh, by the way, Grace. Yes? Uh, would you do me a favor? Oh, of course. What is it? Well, this may sound silly to you, but would you mind not wearing your jewels? Well, there's been so much talk of jewel thieves holding up cards lately. I'd just feel more comfortable if you'd leave them at home. Oh, very well, then. I will. Thank you. Oh, uh, have you a safe place to keep them? Yes, I have a strong box in my dresser drawer. Excellent. <laughs> Until eight, my love? Until eight. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Claire, I have such a tickling in my nose. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me look in that phone. <laughs> I thought so. Uh, Look, sneezing powder. Charlie did that. Who else? That fool. He could have ruined everything. Why don't you get rid of him? I can't. We need him. We need him to get those jewels tonight. He's the best inside man in business. Do you need him after he gets the jewels? Oh, I see what you mean. Special Agent Mitchell. Hello, Ralph. Jim Taylor. Oh, hello, Jim. I was hoping you'd call. Oh, what's up? A man named Hawkins got in touch with me a few minutes ago. He's a real estate agent here in Miami. Yes? He's been out fishing for a couple of days and just read our circular this afternoon. Oh, I see. He claims that he'd rented a house about three weeks ago to a man named Montgomery, huh? who answers to our jewel thieves' description. Well, did you get the address? Yes. Where are you now, Jim? At my hotel. I'll hop right over there and pick you up. <laughs> Me, Richard. Oh. Well, how did everything go? Okay. Have you got the jewels? Yep. Yeah. Well, where are they? Right there in that tin box. Oh, that's wonderful. The box is locked. You'll have to pry it open. That will be a pleasure. Now, uh, give me the details. Very uneventful. Charlie went in. I waited outside in the car. Ten minutes later, he's out with the box, and we drove back here. Wait until I get something to open this box. Where's the Reynolds dame? Oh, I just dropped her off at her house. Ah, this should do it. Did she enjoy the moonlight ride? No jealousy, darling. It was all in the line of duty. Uh, by the way, where's Charlie? He went out to put the car away. Oh. You gonna do like you said? Uh, about what? Taking care of that jerk? Uh, yes. When? A as soon as he comes in. I can hardly wait. Hey, what's that? The car pulling out of the driveway. Huh? Look! Look out the window! Why, Charlie, he's driving away. 
Well, what in the world? Open whip? that box, quick. What? Open it. Claire. Claire, surely you don't think... That's got that... it. Good heavens. It's empty. Not quite empty. What is that? A rubber mouth. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI promotes security for the nation. Now, a word to fathers about security for the family. Had a hard day at the office, father? You're pretty well relaxed now. Anything important can be put off till tomorrow. Well, here's one mighty important question that shouldn't wait. If I should die... How would my family get through the critical years until the youngest child finished high school? How long would my wife and children continue to be well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed? That question is so important that you ought to have an answer based not on guesses or hunches, but on facts. The Equitable Life Assurance Society will help you get these facts. It has prepared a special fact-facing chart for fathers that has these three advantages. First... It's simplicity itself. You can fill it out in five minutes flat. Second, you are guided every step of the way by easy-to-understand pictures which illustrate the unavoidable expenses your family will have to meet. Third, when you're finished with this fact-facing chart, you'll have a clear, accurate, and complete picture of just what income your family would need during the critical years. Mr. Cross, that's something I really ought to know. Do you mind telling me where I can get this fact-facing chart and how much they charge for it? Why, it doesn't cost a cent. The Equitable Society representative in your community will be glad to bring you a copy of this fact-facing chart. Phone him tomorrow or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Sunshine Swindlers. There are times in the lives of all of us when we accept perfect strangers and give them places of confidence. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI proves how foolhardy such a course of action can be. For the criminal makes his living on the misplaced trust of his fellow men. Your FBI does not ask you as decent citizens to reject every offer of friendship made by a stranger. But your FBI does advise you to use an ounce of caution. To check a stranger's story before you believe it. Some strangers you meet are perfectly honest. Are indeed worthy of your every trust. But their honesty lies not in their faces, but in their hearts. Tonight's file continues. FBI Special Agents Taylor and Mitchell, acting on the tip given them by the local real estate man, drove to the jewel thieves' home. They parked their car and quietly circled the outside of the house. They are now returning to the front door. There's something funny here, Ralph. Lights are all on, but we didn't see anyone inside. I know. Garage is empty, too. Hey, do you suppose they were tipped off? Not by the real estate man. He's a reliable citizen. Hey, look there. What? Didn't notice that before. Front door is open. Yeah. Well, I guess we just walk right in. Let's go. Well, I'd say they've gone all right. We must have just missed them, Jim. Look. Huh? There's a cigarette in this ashtray. Yes. What have you got there? Something that proves we've come to the right place. What is it? A toy mouse. Huh? I just found it in this tin box. The practical joker. That's right. Someone's coming up the front walk. Yes. It's a woman. Richard! Richard! Oh, I beg your pardon. Is Mr. Montgomery here? No, I'm afraid he isn't. Well, uh, are you a friend of his? Not exactly. I've got to see him. Something awful has happened. Oh, what's that? Well, I I was out with Mr. Montgomery this evening, and when I returned, I found that all of my jewels were stolen. Uh Uh-oh. He advised me not to wear them, and I didn't, but when I got home... Uh, Just a minute, please. He was with you when they were stolen from your home? That's right. He used a new technique this time, Ralph. Yes. What are you talking about? Oh, I beg your pardon. 
We're special agents of the FBI. What? We came here tonight to pick Mr. Montgomery up. He's wanted for jewel theft in Baltimore. What? Have you notified the police yet? Well, no. When I found they were gone, I came right here. Well, suppose you give us all the details, ma'am. Then we'll get on the phone and send out a general alarm. Well, what do we do now? Please, Claire, I'm trying to think. We can't just keep driving around the streets of Miami. I know. We checked the airport and the railroad station. I didn't think he'd abandon the car. But it's rented. So is this one, but it doesn't stop us from going wherever we please. Dirty double-crosser. How did he have brains enough to pull a trick like that? He undoubtedly overheard us talking about taking care of him, and... Uh, hey, wait a minute. What? I think I can guess where he's heading for. Really? Yes. Our Charles is a creature of habit. I'm sure that one-cylinder mind of his will make him take the jewels to the one place that he's sure he can get rid of them. Where's that? Miller. The fence in New York. That could be. We're heading for Palm Beach. What for? To get a New York train. Well, they run from here, you know. Darling, our sudden disappearance may arouse suspicion. But if we take that much time, he may clear the jewels with Miller before we get there. It's too big a score. Miller won't handle everything in one chunk. So, darling, we play it safe and drive to Palm Beach. Pretty discouraging, Ralph. Yes. Two whole days now, no trace of them. I know. You know, it doesn't seem probable that they would go into hiding here. They must have skipped town. In spite of our alerting airline, bus, and railroad terminal? Yes. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't have been more help to you, Jim. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Ralph. That's breaks of the game. If that real estate agent had given us that tip any sooner, we'd had the three of them behind bars. Uh, by the way, did you see these? Oh, what's that? Photostats I had made of the Beach Club guest registry. Hmm? All three of them signed in there, you know. Yeah, I mean, look at them. Huh? Sure, here. Thanks. We sent copies to Washington. They can check the handwriting. Something might come of that. I'd like a copy of these, Ralph. Sure. Might be very useful. Uh, when are you returning to your home office, Jim? Well, I'm supposed to report back tomorrow. But now that I have these handwriting specimens, I'm going to ask for permission to make a stopover in Philadelphia. <laughs> Now, don't get excited. The pattern worked out just as I knew it would. Miller bought less than half the jewels from him. Told him to come back next week. Did you find out where he's living? Yes, he's right here in New York. I have the address. Wait for me. I'll be right over to pick you up. Hello, Charles. <laughs> Greetings from Miami. Oh, what are you doing here? We found out where you were living. We decided to surprise you and drop in. Richard, never mind the small talk. Let's get down to business. Very well, my dear. Look, I... Uh, I bet you, you thought I ran out on you down in Miami, huh? You gave that impression. Well, it was just a joke. See, you know me. I'm all the time joking. This was your funniest. Well, now, Claire, you don't think I really tried to lamb off with them jewels. All we care about right now is the money you collected from Miller, plus the rest of the loot. Uh, sure, sure. I, I got it right here, all of it. Wait. Huh? I want you to observe I have a gun here, just in case you try anything irregular. Oh, now, look. Quit stalling. Get it up. Okay. Here's the, here's the money, and here's the rest of the jewels. Thank you. And now I have something for you. Oh! I see no reason for our staying around here, Claire. Did you get everything? It appears that way, yes. Okay, let's go. You see, darling, this proves the old adage, all's well that ends well. After you, my dear. I'd advise you to stay right where you are. Who are you? What? I'm a special agent of the FBI. Richard. I have a gun here, so don't try anything. What are you doing here? I came to arrest that man on the floor. Finding you here was an added surprise. How'd you know where to find him? As you know, your friend there liked practical jokes. I learned that from a catalog he left in your Baltimore hotel room. So? 
So in Miami, I got specimens of his handwriting. I took it to the novelty company in Philadelphia and found out that he had written for another catalog from this address. Oh, that fool! Now, if you'll hold out your hands, please, I'd like to clamp on these handcuffs. Oh, and by the way, they're not made of rubber. For their guilt in violating the National Stolen Property Act, Richard Montgomery and Charles Day were sentenced to serve a 10-year term in a federal penitentiary. Claire Montgomery received a sentence of seven years. For his complicity in the crime, the fence John Miller was imprisoned for five years. And thus was closed another case in the files of your FBI. Files that are as full as they are because last year there were almost one and a half million major crimes committed in this country. It is difficult for the human mind to understand the gigantic proportions of one and a half million major crimes. So perhaps it would be more helpful to break that figure down. To tell you that it's been slightly over 26 minutes since this program went on the air. And in that time, in that period of less than a half hour, there have been 74 major crimes committed somewhere in the United States. 74 more jobs for your local police, your state law enforcement officers, and for your FBI. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. When the breadwinner of a family dies, what are the critical years for his wife and children? The critical years are the years before the youngest child finishes high school, years in which the home must be kept together. To help you estimate just what income your family would need during those critical years, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has prepared a special fact-facing chart for fathers. Your Equitable Society representative will be glad to bring you a copy of this fact-facing chart. Phone him tomorrow or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Bowtie Murders. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Bowtie Murders on... This is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.